What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a great week so far. Got a very special video today for people who are fans of the House of Bond number no. nine, in particular, the Dubai series. Now, I've seen a couple videos where people go through the Dubai series. Some they just spray on testing strips, they get samples. These are all the ones that I've purchased, I've owned, I wear on skin. So it's a little bit more of a deeper dive into the Dubai series, kind of going into detail for each fragrance. So we'll go ahead and get to it. Uh, these aren't ranked in any particular order. These are just the ones that I've chosen to buy with my own money. I think I've tried every single one from the Dubai series besides either Garnet or Ruby. I forget which one of those I had tried, uh, but I haven't really had one that I've not liked. There are just some that fit my collection better than others and some I personally prefer over others. So feel free to leave your top five from the Dubai series down below. It's always interesting to hear people's opinion. Uh, but these are my favorites that I've decided to purchase with my own money. And first off, we're kind of go with an honorable mention to Bond Number no. 9 Dubai Amber. Now, honestly, man, Dubai Amber, it may be one of the most expensive smelling and one of the best ones from the collection. But it is just so strong with that civet musk in there and some of the other ingredients. It's got civet and incense, very heavy on the raspberry vanilla. I like this one a lot. Um, but I'm not sure what I'm going to do when the 7ml bonbon runs out. I've only worn it about six times, and I probably have another maybe 10 wears from this bonbon in there. And after that, I may decide to buy a bottle. It's just something I don't wear a lot. It's more for cooler weather. It's almost, it doesn't go like uh, Interlude 53 from Amouage. It's a lot different fragrance, but it's heavy. And it's heavy in the sense it's not something you particularly want to wear in the hot weather. And me being down here in the Southeast United States, it's pretty much always hot, except for a couple months out of the year. So I just don't know how much I would use Dubai Amber, which is why I've held off buying a bottle. Uh, but who knows, when that bonbon bon runs out, I may end up just getting a bottle if I can find it for around $200. Maybe I can get a tester uh, similar to the Platinum or the Amethyst for under $200. In that case, I may buy it just to have it as part of the collection because the, the Dubai Amber is a very good quality fragrance from them. I just personally just don't know how much I would use it. So that Bon Bon will do me just fine for now. Um, Dubai Indigo, a lot of people's favorite from the Bond Number no. 9 Dubai series. And I can see why. Uh, very unisex, very compliment oriented, uh, very much a blue fragrance, but it's a little bit more unique. It's got a peach and lychee fruit in there. So it's much different opening than you expect from your typical blue fragrance. It doesn't have the pineapple are those uh, typical run-of-the-mill citrus fruits. So it's a very exotic twist, maybe a Middle Eastern twist on a blue fragrance. But I mean, for me, other than the orange blossom, the peach and the lychee fruit, what really stands out to me about Dubai Indigo, um, this will be kind of a common theme with a lot of these, but really it's, it's the dry down and the notes in the dry down. Man, you guys got really nice musk, agar wood and oak moss note. And for me, that's what really sets it apart is the dry down. It becomes a lot more masculine, a lot more high quality. I mean, the whole thing is quality, uh, but really in the dry down, when you get to that agar wood, the musk and the oak moss, that's really for me where this fragrance kind of shows its form. Uh, very great opening. I love the opening of this one as well, but the Dubai Indigo, man, it really starts turning into more of a masculine type of masterpiece, at least on my skin when it dries down. Very good longevity on that. You guys know I don't really like to give specific information on longevity and projection and all that stuff because, again, it just depends on how much you spray, where you spray it, do you spray it on clothing, you know, what area of the country do you live in. There's just so many variables. Um, you know, do you use a hydration method before you spray the cologne or perfume on your skin? If you spray it on dry skin, you're never going to get as good of longevity out of the fragrance as if your skin was hydrated. Um, so there's just too many specifics, but all these last a very long time and they all project very well Depending on the ingredients some project a little bit better than others But another one of my favorites maybe my absolute favorite from the entire Dubai series that I've tried so far is Dubai gold Guys, there's just something special about this fragrance of all the fancy stuff I own of the Bodiceas, the Raja Parfums, the Amouage Extraits um, it's, it's just hard for me to put anything in my collection that far ahead of this, especially for like dress up and special occasions, um, extremely well complimented, definitely a proper masculine dress up type of fragrance for me. 
even though they don't smell the same, I'd kind of put it into that category with like Amouage Overture Man. Uh, there's just a couple categories, um, fragrances that fit that category. Uh, but this one here, for me, there's something about the opening. It's very fresh. It's got like a ginger and bitter orange kind of note going on. It's got brandy. One of my favorites about this is it's very musk and patchouli heavy at the base. Along with three to four different types of wood in this fragrance, it's just a very nice wood musk heavy fragrance with some bright citrus notes at the top. You get a little bit of that boozy kind of brandy cognac note. Uh, Dubai Gold is just absolutely one of my favorites, not just of the Dubai and of my Bond collection, but of my entire collection. It's just always been one of my favorite fragrances. I love the, uh, the note profile, the structure, the longevity of the fragrance, just everything about Bond Number no. 9 Dubai Gold. I would also say it's probably one of the longest lasting here, um, as well as best projecting. I think Amethyst may have it beat a little bit in both of those categories. Uh, but just absolutely stunning stuff from the House of Bond number no. nine. Again, a lot of these, you know, they're $600 retail. You can find most of these for $250 to $300. Um, I know Joma Shop has a couple. There's some private sellers on eBay. Uh, but don't pay retail for these. Do your homework. You don't really see a lot of Bonds counterfeited, thankfully. Uh, but do your homework. You can definitely find these for well under retail, half the price. Um, and for me, that's a good deal for something like this. But $600 retail, as much as I love Bond number no. 9, that's a little bit wild. So, Dubai Amethyst. Man, when I looked at the notes on this first, I blind bought it as a tester almost a year and a half, maybe two years ago. Unbelievable stuff, man. Again, looking at the notes, not really sure what to expect. I knew I was probably going to like it. I didn't really expect the tropical type of warm weather vibes. But man, the tonka bean, the patchouli, tobacco, ambroxan, jasmine, rose, lily of the valley, just the way the florals interact. And there may be some stuff in this fragrance that they're not exactly putting in the notes because you get a very slight like fig, coconut, slight rum note in there almost. It's just very, to me, it's very tropical. Definitely a very tropical kind of beach vibe sort of fragrance, but more a Middle Eastern twist on that. And... The tobacco, the more I wear this, the more I realize how prominent the tobacco is. And it's a different type of tobacco. It's not a heavy, spicy tobacco that you would find in Amouage Royal Tobacco or uh, Zhirzhov Luxor. It's a little bit lighter. It's definitely prevalent in there. But it's interesting, the type of the tobacco they used, it really kind of set this fragrance off and brought it to another level. It's something that would not have been the same if they would have used a different type of tobacco in there. It would have been probably too strong and overpowered some of the other notes of the fragrance, uh, but they just did a really good job of blending the Dubai Amethyst, giving it a really cool identity, very unique. I've never smelled anything even similar to it. Um, there's a couple fragrances that have tonka and tobacco in them, uh, but they just don't smell the same as the Dubai Amethyst, and probably because of the florals and some of the other things they blended in there. Uh, just a really stunning, unique fragrance. Definitely unisex, I would say probably indigo, Amethyst and Jade are probably the most unisex on this list, while the most masculine would be the Dubai Amber, Gold, and Platinum, at least that I've tried so far. So if you haven't got your hands on Amethyst yet, at least worth a sample or a decant because this is really some stunning stuff. Uh, great for hot weather. I wear it in Florida all the time. Just beautiful stuff. Now, a recent acquisition I got was the Dubai Platinum, and I have to shout out to one of my subscribers, uh, Smell Niche Times 3. She had told me about Dubai Platinum a little while ago. I think she had smelled it in one of the stores uh, that she works near, or maybe it was actually the Bond Number no. 9 store itself. Uh, but she was telling me how good this was, and it was a little bit of a newer release from the Dubai series. It wasn't one of the original launches. So I don't know how this got by me, but as soon as I saw the notes, I knew I had to have it, guys. Incense, oud, cistus, vanilla, cedarwood, uh, ginger, cardamom, so you get a lot of nice, like, bright, spice, like, citrus notes at the top. Uh, one of my favorite ingredients, which I didn't men mention in this, is the uh, papyrus oil. So this has a very similar smell to it as Amouage Boundless, even though the fragrance itself is not the same, but Amouage Boundless has papyrus oil in there, and that's something, as I go along in my fragrance journey, I realize I enjoy a lot more. Uh, it's just a very good note in fragrances. 
gives it a nice kind of roundness, like a slight woodiness. I guess you could almost use papyrus a little bit, um, almost not really like a substitute, but somewhat similar to like a vetiver or a wood note that you can kind of use as a middle to a base note to kind of kind of wrap everything together. But I'm starting to realize I really like that note. You definitely get the incense and the oud in here as well, along with the ginger and cardamom. A little bit of that cistus and vanilla for that kind of resiny sweetness as well. Uh, one of the things about this fragrance, which I have said before on my last uh, weekly fragrance rotation, but if you're looking for the general vibe of what Dubai Platinum gives, for some of my old school fragrance guys out there, very, very similar to Creed's uh, Spice and Woods. And also I would probably put it in the category of these three fragrances combined for the vibe, where you have Clive Christian V, the Amber Fugere, the old school Creed Spice and Woods, and then you have the discontinued Bond Number no. 9 Andy Warhol. Now the incense note in here is very similar to Bond Number no. 9's Andy Warhol. The fragrance is a lot different, uh, but at least that incense note, if you've ever smelled the original Andy Warhol uh, from Bond Number no. 9, The Silver Factory, this Dubai Platinum has that same type of incense note in there, which I personally love. So uh, for me, that's just a home run. I mean, I loved all three of those fragrances. So again, Creed Spice and Woods, the Clive Christian V, the Amber Fugere, and the discontinued Andy Warhol Silver Factory. You combine those three fragrances. This is kind of the vibe that Dubai Platinum gives. So very good stuff. Smells even better on skin. Some of these... I've tried on testing strips, and I guess it could be said with any fragrance, but these really need to be worn on skin to show their true form. Uh, the testing strips, for me, just didn't do it justice. So, another one, uh, I believe it was Eric Rice, one of my longtime subscribers that was telling me about Dubai Jade. It was one of his favorite from the Dubai series. Really love the notes on this one, guys. Raspberry, cumin, violet leaves, you got some birch tar at the, uh, the base as well. Just a very, very proper Middle Eastern fragrance. Outdoor, slightly fruity, slightly green. Not over the top in any one area. This man, this stuff is just extremely well blended. Uh, Dubai Jade is actually a little bit lighter than I thought it was gonna be looking at the notes, but it was a very pleasant surprise. Uh, Dubai Jade, any time of year it can be worn in cooler weather, uh, but for me it exceeds a little bit more in the spring and summer. It, kind of goes better for the hot weather, at least for me in my environment. Uh, but you really do get some good longevity out of there. About eight hours, it does start to stay a little bit closer to skin, but you can still smell it. You can really get the birch and some of those base notes in this fragrance. Uh, but Dubai Jade has definitely become one of my favorites. Just for an all around, it's a great office or date night fragrance, very versatile. Uh, very similar to like Indigo, even though they don't smell at all the same, they're just very easy to wear grab and go, they're gonna fit a lot of situations. They're not gonna to be too overpowering or too harsh for anybody. Um, it's not something you have to worry about. It's over spraying for the most part, you know, it's not one of those fragrances that's offensive at all. So just a great job with Bond Number no. 9, getting the Dubai series. There's quite a few other ones um, that they have. I don't know if they're gonna be worth the money. You know, some of them are like a thousand dollars. They got the Swarovski crystals. Uh, they have the Blue Diamond. I think that's going for like a thousand. And they don't really list a lot of the notes for the higher ones. So unless I can get a decant or try some of the samples, I don't know if I'll be trying any of those uh, for the thousand dollar price point because they do seem similar to some of the other ones in the in the collection. And again, they don't really give out a whole lot of notes on them. You're only looking at maybe three to four notes for those eight hundred to a thousand dollar bottles. So if anyone's tried those, leave it down below. But I've heard um, for a lot of people. Uh, Jade, again, one of the favorites. Indigo is a favorite for a lot of people. I think a lot of people are starting to discover how good gold is. I know, uh, I forget who, what subscriber it was, but he commented on my video and he was talking about how the gold gets him the most compliments. And I was the same way with that, man. All these get a lot of compliments, uh, but gold and indigo seem to get a ton of compliments. Uh, that's just how it goes on my skin. It really is gonna kind of vary depending on who wears the fragrance, what the situation is and how much you spray, but I don't think you can go wrong with any of these guys. They are really, really good, especially if you can get them for the 250 to $300 range. They all last a very long time, so very happy to be able to bring you this video. Again, I've not seen a whole lot of people doing a detailed uh, dive, um, at least from what I've seen on YouTube, and if they have, they just get the samples out, they you know, spray them on a testing strip, and they're kind of doing first impressions. 
Whereas these, I've owned them all for quite some time and wore them on skin at least two or three times for each fragrance. Uh, some much more than others, you know, Dubai Platinum was pretty recent. So I've only worn that maybe two or three times. Jade probably five and each of these I've probably worn 10 times or more. Uh, so I definitely have a good idea of how they perform in all sorts of weather, the longevity and everything like that. And I'm certainly not disappointed. You know, it's, it's a very good collection. One of my personal favorite fragrance collections, of course, you got the Amouage X Straits, uh, the Bodicea Sapphires. Uh, there's just a lot of good, good ones in my collection, but the Dubai has definitely become one of my favorites from Bond number no. nine. Uh, to me, a very high quality and very special stuff. So glad I was able to bring you this video, guys. I hope you have a great rest of your week. I'll be back with another video shortly. I got a weekly fragrance rotation that I'm gonna be wrapping up here, hopefully by the end of the week. Um, that was just kind of going through what I was wearing last week. And I do have another perfume from Raja Dove, and I'll kind of leave that a secret before I review it, but I do have a really special one from that house coming. Again, that I don't see reviewed that, that often. So look forward to being able to do that for you guys, and I'll see you later this week, all right?